Welcome to Finite Element Methods. Today we'll be discussing the 2D linear triangular isoparametric elements. In the previous lecture, we discussed the 2D quadrilateral isoparametric elements. And so let's look at how that formulation works. But first we wanna talk about the general approach and why we're doing this in the first place. If I have this domain and I wanna solve the governing equation over this domain, my end goal is to come up with a simple linear system of equations that can simply solve rather than trying to find the exact solution to the governing equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna divide the domain into quadrilaterals, triangular elements. And what I wanna do is to figure out how to de develop a systematic approach to solving governing equations. And so the shape functions for all triangles and quadrilaterals could be different. We discussed that already. And the derivatives of these shape functions in, are going to look differently. And they have to be calculated for e every element. The integrals of each of these domains, subdomains, is going to be arbitrary and difficult to calculate the integral of the quantity over the domain. But what if I can come up with an approach that maps every single quadrilateral into a square and every triangle is actually mapped into a simple shape that allows, allows us to solve the governing equations in a simple fashion. So for a triangular element, if I have an arbitrary triangle, what I wanna do is to bring it into this simple tri uh, right angle triangle. You can see here that number one here got mapped into this corner, while two and three got mapped in this manner. This is called the R and S coordinate system. So if I can map every single triangle into this shape, then I can solve the governing equation over this domain and then be able to then map it back into this shape to then transform and, and to assemble everything together. So it's a very similar idea we're gonna use where we interpolate the temperatures over the domain uh, using the shape functions corresponding to this simple triangle. So the temperature, which is a variable of interest, is going to get approximated over this RNS coordinate system over this triangular element. And the shape functions are defined for this triangular element. So M bold has these shape functions. T, one, T2, T3 are the nodal temperatures. They're unknown. And I wanna find those for the whole system. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna approximate <clears throat> X for each of these nodes using the shape functions. I'm going to try to map it going from here to here. And I'm gonna use the same shape functions I had here. I'm gonna use them again. These shape functions multiplied in this vector, multiplied by this column vector, will give me x at any point internally to this triangle here. And I'll se select the shape functions in a smart way. I'll do the same thing for the y coordinate. So that happens as well. And now x and y, which are fully known, and n, which are fully known, allows us to relate the coordinate system in this system to this system using this multiplication. So I'm able to map, and, and I'm able to map it from the local coordinate system to the global coordinate system via these coordinate interpolations. That's the goal. We now will determine the shape functions. These shape functions here, we're gonna find them. And how we do that. So we have three unknowns, one, two, and three. So that makes sense, three shape functions. So the approximation is A plus BR plus CS. Okay. 
For three nodes, uh, I just need one, two, and three for three unknowns. The Pascal triangle tells us, tells us that that's all I need. So let's see, TR comma S equals A plus BR plus CS. T at zero, zero. So at this node here, I get T one. So that's A plus B times zero plus C times zero, that's T one. So I'm able to solve for A, which is T one. Second equation is T one at zero, one comma zero. That's here. And that's equal to T two. So I have A plus B plus C equals T two. I know what A is, so I can solve for T2. I can actually solve for B is T2 minus T1. And then I can substitute T0 comma one. And that's for this node, node three. So that's T3. So A plus B times zero plus C times one. I get T3 is A plus C. I can solve for C, which is T3 minus T1. So then the approximation function becomes uh, A, which is T1, B, which is T2 minus T1 times R, plus T3 minus T1 times S. And now I can factor out T1. That gives me one minus R minus S, plus T2 times R plus T3 times S. We can check whether this works or not. Plug in here, this shape function one, two, and three. So if I plug in R and S to be zero, which is this node here, you see that these two disappear and I get T equals T1, which is exactly what I want. This shift function will disappear here and here, which is great. So this shift function is inactive here and here. This shift function obviously is active here, but not here and here. And this shift function is active here, but not here and here. So this works really well. And these are the shift functions. N1 is one minus R minus S. N2 is R and N3 is S. And this is put here in a row vector and this is a column vector. So T equals N bold times T bold. And my goal is to, again, I have to calculate these gradients because this B bold requires it. Once again, I have these partials that need to be taken with respect to this. But again, N1 and N2 and N3 are only a function of R and S. So how do I calculate that derivative, right? How we do we that? How, how do we do that? Because you can see here that N1, N2 and N3 are not a function of X and Y, but I have to calculate those to be able to plug it in here. And this is, the formulation for an element in the global coordinate system, right? But we already said that this is very useless to me because I have to calculate shape functions for every element, find that their derivatives, and that integral is hard to do for any shape triangle. So to calculate this, we're gonna use the same trick as before using chain rule. So I'm gonna basically find the partial of ni respect to r instead. And you can see here partial of ni respect to x, partial of x respect to r, plus partial of ni respect to y, partial of y respect to r. You can see here x and x cancels, and then y and y cancels, so that makes sense that that's the, how you do it. Partial of ni respect to s also can be calculated, so you get partial of ni respect to x, partial of x respect to s, plus partial of ni respect to y, partial of y respect to s. I can put this in matrix format. So this is a column vector there. And now I have a, a, a matrix, which I call Jacobian. And then this becomes a column vector here. Let's see if this works out. This row times this column gives me exactly that, the first equation. The second row times that first column, that column gives me that second equation here. Really good. So now I can invert the Jacobian which is right here, like that. And this is this, and this is this, okay? So that's J inverse. And this column vector is this one right here. Very good. I know all these quantities because I know what X and Y are 
in, ter in terms of RNS. I, I know that. And I know that from this approximation here. So I know this derivative for I equals one, two, and three. So I know all that. And I have to calculate B bold. So we can do that now. B bold is the gradient of N, which is all this. But I don't know, I know what this is. This is equal to J inverse times that. And then this column vector is J inverse times that. That's what you see here. And I factored out a J inverse. This column vector is also J inverse times that. So I have everything now. J is easy to calculate, that's our numbers. And the J, the Jacobian contains the geometry information that speaks about the mapping that we talked about. So I'm ready to do the substitutions very soon. J here is element unique. This is same for every element, that's the benefit of this. I only calculate this once. The only thing that needs to be recalculated is the Jacobian, which is an easy expression to calculate because you know the coordinates and you know the shape functions. These derivatives are very easy to calculate. I, ha I have N1, N2, and N3. <clears throat> we have to calculate Jacobian for every element, as you can see here in the bottom left. I know X from this expression, these coordinates are known. I know the coordinates of the nodes for the triangle. I know the shape function, so I, I know what this is. That's M bold times X bold. Look at this, I have to calculate partial of X with respect to R. Partial of X with respect to R equals the partial of M bold with respect to R. I can do that calculation. <clears throat> And I did a slight correction here, I apologize. This should be X bold, X bold. So I can take these partials very easily. And I can take these partials very easily. So now I'm ready. Um, here, partial of X with respect to R is this right here. Partial of Y with respect to R is this right here. Partial of X with respect to S is this right here. And partial Y with respect to S is this right here. So very simple calculation. That needs to be calculated for every single element. We got to do that. <laughs> this is very easy to calculate now. So let's see. DA is also the determinant of J, DR, DS. We already covered that. So these are easy to substitute. So let's see, uh, I'm ready now to sub plug it in. I know this B bold N. So B bold equals J inverse B bold N. So I'll plug it in here, plug that one in here. This DA becomes J Jacobian, the deter determinant DRDS. Yeah, so pretty much the rest goes the same. Now the integrals, it's not a square, it's a triangle. So it goes from zero to one, zero to one minus S. These derivatives are very easy to find. You can see here, partial of N1 respect to R is minus one and so forth. You can just do this and you will see, you get a constant value. Notice this, you get a constant value there for B bold. If you look at J more carefully, this column vector here is really B bold N, and that's B bold N. It's a two by three, two by three. That's what you see there. X bold is a three by one, and that's a three by one. So two by three times a three by two gives you two by two, which is what the Jacobian is. Again, you have to do it by hand to learn the process. D bold is a conductivity matrix, which is known. 
And that's the error. It's a triangular element which has only three shape functions, not this one. So I'm ready now to calculate these integrals. How do I do that? Well, there's a method and it's called Gauss quadrature for triangles. And for one point Gauss quadrature, you're gonna select one third and one third as a value that you'll plug in here. So if G is the integrand, you'll evaluate the integrand at one third and one third with a weight factor of one and a one half in, in the front. For a, a second uh, two-point or three-point glass quadrature, so one here, one here, one here, uh, you're going to have an A of 1 over 6 and 1 over 6. That's a, that's what goes in here. So you take the integrand and evaluate it at 1 over 6, 1 over 6 with a weight of a third. In this case, the weight is the same for everybody here. And a one-half in, in, ahead of this. For additional points, uh, so four points, one, two, three, and four um, is going to look like this. With these A, B, C, and D as a points where you're going to evaluate G, the sampling points we call them, with a weight given here. And then you have a one half in front. There's another way to do it. You can do um, the same a gas quadrature, but now it, they can be in these edges. That's another approach. And the weight factors are at a third. And these are the locations where you will sample it. Here as well for the cubic, this is what you get. Similar to this approach, but now you're sampling on about here, 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 and here. So that covers the linear triangular element. I hope you appreciated this and you have a great day. And that you can see how we have systematically solved finite element uh, problems by using isoparametric formulation where the shape function is the same for every element. The domain is the same. The derivatives of the shape functions are the same for every element. The only thing that changes is Jacobian which carries the geometry information so we didn't lose the geometry information. We, we were able to retain that in the Jacobian. And next, what we're going to cover is the second higher order triangular elements. So 2D higher order triangular elements is next. Thank you so much. Have a great day.